I'd like to say just a few words about this place and then a few words about um, the wonderful sacrifice that men and women uh, serving our military services makes for our benefit and for our security. You know, walking among the, uh, uh, the graves here is a wonderful experience of, um, first of all, you know, the initial thing is names, just the richness of names here and um, the great diversity of people in the, the older part of the cemetery and the newer part of the cemetery, a wonderful richness. I think it's important for us to remember that every one of those stones, every grave here bears with it a story, a history. People who have come here from someplace else or have born and raised here, every single person represents a story, a history, a living soul. From this very holy ground rises the story of men and women who have lived in this place, struggling and searching their lives for the mark of God in their presence and the story of Jesus. This is a holy place. This is a precinct marked out. I think it's interesting that um, this particular cemetery has this wonderful tradition of planting evergreens. You know, that goes back to a very early days, you know, uh, something that our ancestors brought from Europe because um, evergreen trees are green all year round. And so it's a sign, of course, of eternal life. There are wonderful pictures of the resurrection and the tomb of Jesus that have evergreen trees, um, cypress trees uh, planted around them that have, uh, you know, whose leaves, uh, whose uh, needles never fade. A wonderful chance for us to encounter those individuals who came, who were buried in this place in the hope that one day the great trumpet of God's salvation will call us all forth from our graves to serve him in peace and harmony. I'm very honored that here, right here, probably standing on, on the grave of uh, Father Fitzpatrick, I, I stand, it's a wonderful image, I suppose, for me, because I, I stand on the shoulders of the men and women who have, have gone before me in this place, but especially for the priests who have gone before here and served daily mass, funerals, weddings, baptisms. Their ordination springs forth for us in the wonderful tradition of faith that is ours. I'd like to speak about Memorial Day and our memorial to uh, those individuals who have served our nation. My father was a pilot in World War II and didn't talk very often about his experience, the kind of the details of the experience that he had there. He was a highly decorated individual, but I never spoke of that about that. Um, you know, we only discovered his medals when we went into the attic of the house after he had died and discovered his footlocker was still there with all of his military things, but he had never talked about any of that. What he did talk about was the people that he encountered in the military. You know, I grew up in this Irish ghetto, you know, um, uh, down in Emmitsburg, you know, and the outsiders were the, like the German Catholics, you know, a mixed marriage in Emmitsburg is when a German Catholic marries an Irish Catholic. <laughs> so he grew up in this very uh, kind of insular community. And so when he went to the military, first of all, to the University of Iowa, and then especially to the military where men live in this very kind of intimate kind of fashion, he met people from all over the country, from many nationalities and from other faiths, Jews and, and, and Protestants that he would had not encountered as a young man growing up in Emmitsburg. He talked about how that enriched his life. One of the important things that I take from that is that I never heard my father talk about so-and-so was a Democrat or a Republican. Something has crept into this great republic of ours. The acrimony that sometimes is born of political opinion. There's no place for that on the battlefield. There's no place in that in the cockpit of a plane that's running sorties out to protect our liberty. We need to be individuals who see beyond our own political agenda to the very beauty of this nation. We are heirs of such a great tradition of life and goodness and freedom. We have an obligation as men and women of faith to hold fast first, first to those freedoms, to that wonderful tradition of dedication and service. That's what unites us as a people. The recognition, not of, not of battles on distant places, but the recognition that this is our nation and that we have a right and an obligation to protect it from any kind of forces, foreign or domestic. 
that might impinge on those freedoms. There are many men and women buried in this place who served our nation. We need to touch and remember the loneliness and the fear and the anxiety of those years of service, away from family, under sometimes constant threat of death. Let us lift these people before the Lord for the courage and the fortitude that they exhibited for our benefit, for our comfort, for our nation. When we drive by this place, let us always remember that here rest heroes, heroes of our faith, heroes of our nation, heroes of our parish. Let's ask the Lord to give us the courage and the dedication to follow where they have led.